What is up, everybody? It is Jay. Let me uh, let me lighten up my face over here. It's a little dark. I hope everybody is in. Oh, there we go. Hiya, hiya. What was that? Good. It's a little dark. It's dark everywhere. Um, let me know if you can hear me. I I always have some weird difficulties with sound, and I apologize. But we're going to be talking about why things in the aquarium industry cost so dang much. So do, do me a favor and share this video because we're about to get to the bottom of why this costs so much. Do do, And then uh, let me know how everybody's week's going. Wendy, can you hear me on that bad boy? Ooh, see, it doesn't even show up as if it is working uh, at the bottom, which is really, really weird. So greatly apologize for it. I am drinking Buffalo Trace and Coke Zero. And I would love to know in the comments what you folks think is driving the costs of fish, even, even just dry goods up. Uh, does, does anybody have any idea? Um, be specific. I, I know Hawaii is shut down for saltwater folks, but uh, it goes a little bit more than that. So before we jump in after this, I'm going to have a live video members only. So if you're interested, uh, you can become a member and you get 15% off at northfinusa.com when you utilize code. And then I'm going to type it in. And it's going to be silly because I always jack it up. Jay Wilson. 15. Boom. Billy Parker, what's going on, Jay? Just slaying it at work and getting ready for my daughter to arrive in March. Congratulations, my friend, for being a dad to a daughter. That's uh, not something I, I can't even, I, I can't even think about that right now. The lights are super bright today. Aren't they like really, really bright? So mer mermaids reefs in the house. I've recently crossed over to the dark side and entered the world of discus. Good God, I need a second job. So if you think discus are expensive, the saltwater industry is, is ridiculous, but the freshwater industry in certain areas is even just as ridiculous. Uh, COVID definitely plays a huge role. Let me slide this, uh, this deal over because I really like for folks to let me know in the comments, honestly, what do you think is drawing this crazy cost? Like, what is it? Is it the, is it COVID? Is it supply and demand? Is it, I mean, what, what is it? And is it just fish? Is it just dry goods? Is it pumps? Is it filters? Is there specific entities? Have you noticed an increase at your big box retailers or your local fish store or your fish store you go to online? Um, I would love to hear it. And then we'll answer these questions and then kind of get to the reason I wanted to talk about this because there was a phone call I had today and it put it all into perspective. So give me one moment here. These lights have a, a dimmer built into the inline part of them. And so you can find your, your sweet spot here. Ooh, I think that's a little better. A little better, it's still a little bright. A little better. Ooh, we'll leave it there. Till I can get everything fixed. So pandemic, lack of people to supply, high demand, shipping cost and availability. Let's see. Yellow tangs, especially high demand when they were cheap, big, even higher demand when Hawaii shut down. Um, got some green in there. Oh, what's up? What's up with that? Ooh. So no, and people are misspelling things, which is absolutely normal because I do it on a daily basis. 
But there is a, a massive amount of things that go into play that cause the rise of a lot of these things. And we overlook it. We think it's one thing um, or we think maybe, okay, this thing is connected to this and then that, and it's over. But that's not even close to the case. So I remember when I used to go to local fish store, big box, pet store, and it was in and out. Now the wait is longer because there's more people waiting to get fish. So everyone is using COVID to up their prices with no justification. <laughs> so this is good. I'm hearing a crazy amount of, um, I don't know, polar opposites of what's going on. I think the pandemic and supply and demand due to more people getting into the hobby because of the pandemic, okay? Well, it's kind of like we are willing to pay more for quality fish and food than we were 10 years ago. The hobby is more mainstream now. Keep them coming because I really want to talk about each and every one of these. Uh, just got some females and let them pop out fry every month or two. What? <laughs> so, what is it? What is that? More people are home, bored, and a lot more are in the hobby. So everyone, I guess, has this, I don't want to say it's a, a, a problem because, I mean, I guess it's just an effect of a cause, right? So a lot of folks, you call them, hi, thank you for calling. Due to uh, the recent circumstances of the COVID pandemic, uh, wait times are longer, service is crappier, and we expect more from you, the consumer. So please hold and listen to our crappy music that is played by Bill from the janitorial service. So that is what we hear. You can call your, your utility company. You can call your mobile phone company. You can call for customer service for most products. Uh, you could call, you know, let's say you have a warranty service and you need to call in. You're going to, to get some sort of, even Google does it. They double charged me and literally I couldn't call them. They said, go to the forums to get your answer. Well, some guy in, in, in Pakistan is not going to be able to refund my card. I need to talk to somebody that works at Google. And, it, and it's, you're seeing, you know, COVID issue, COVID issue, COVID issue. And this is not a, a, a political talk. This is not a rant. This is leading to a lot of what is happening all over. But mainly, we are seeing it in the aquarium industry for, for quite a few reasons. Uh, Buffalo Trace is on the rocks for Casper off the fish topic, but the price of lumber has skyrocketed recently. Yes, it has. So let's back up. We're going to rewind prior to the COVID pandemic. I, I don't know. Pandemic just isn't a word. I, I, it doesn't flow off the tongue. It's like the pandemic. So we'll just say prior to COVID, right? Because um, it pisses me off what everyone else is doing. So prior to COVID, so we'll say January 2020, there was already in place fees, UPS, I know for certain, I believe FedEx, and USPS was in talks. Freight was already on the rise. So there were already uh, fees or uh, surcharges. And UPS was lowering it from 70 pounds down to 50 pounds. Well, right off the rip, that's going to affect a lot of folks. Consumers, business owners, trans shippers, manufacturers, shipping companies. And... Do you have any idea that a black midnight Ram is going for 25 bucks? I'm not surprised. I'm not. I'm really not surprised at the prices. So prior to COVID, spaghetti face. A ton of surcharges are getting ready to be added to shipping charges. 
So when when you're visiting your your local favorite online and you go to cunninghamcichlids.com, what does Cunningham Cichlids do? He's about to get hit with a 12% surcharge, right? Before before we get to even more nitty gritties, because honestly, we we as consumers, I'm going to put myself in the category of consumer. We are not thinking about these things. And we are just like, you know what? You suck, guy. You suck because you raised your prices and you are getting too big for your britches. Little hot shot, got a little website selling fish and stuff. My money's hard earned. Well, what about theirs too? And, and, and they have to deal with it. So how do they pass it on? Do they pass it on? Do they absorb it? Is it, is it fair for them to absorb it? Is it fair? Maybe the distributor doesn't, doesn't charge anything extra, but they're like, hey, look, 12% surcharge on all of your goods that are coming from our factory. Who do they pass it on to? We don't, we don't, we don't think about those things, right? Because we're like, well, they're, they're billion, trillion, gazillionaires. They can, they can handle it. I can't. I can't handle it. I'm working 72 freaking jobs here, but my discus, they need to eat, right? We're not putting anything into perspective. If if we're really working extra jobs to take care of our fish tanks and we really have something to think about. And I'm trying to make this as relatable and humorous and um, entertaining so that maybe this will help you understand what's happening. Local fish store tried to sell me two inch Venusas for 30 bucks. I was like, nah, I'm good. (laughs) Okay. So shipping already going up. Now there were tariffs for a lot of goods. So when you're like, ah, I only buy Americano. It's Americano. We have to really pay attention to labels too. I'm, if anybody knows me, I am all about supporting American-made businesses, right? Or businesses that stand behind their product in, a, in an exceptional way. And when I look at it, I'm seeing a new label. American-owned, assembled, and designed. California. 100% of these products are from China, (laughs) which is okay. I mean, there's a lot of products, high-end products, a lot of great manufactured products from all over the world to include China, regardless of what anybody wants to think. However, what we don't realize is tariffs were in place. So aquarium manufacturers, um, lighting manufacturers, Uh, some pump companies, filtration companies, food companies, a lot of different things that fall into the Chinese realm. Because let's face it, there are a lot of products uh, that come out of China. And so they're trying to find loopholes um, to to really uh, avoid the tariffs. So T-Bones Fish has said companies can never justify raising their prices. They always use inflation to justify. It's true. What is a company supposed to do? So let me continue and then we will rant about it because I'm on the same page as you. I'm looking to purchase a home with Wendy and ah, the price of homes has gone up because of the cost of goods. And we're forgetting this. So we're like, this stupid builder's just trying to make money in a pandemic. You're not understanding. It's a pandemic. Feel for me. What about their family and the people that they have working for them? And it's this cost. Um, displacement is very difficult. So now you ring in COVID. Skirt. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, announcement, please halt all business. Please stop shipping. Please don't touch that. Please, everyone, stop. Buy toilet paper. So everyone freezes. Nobody's sure what's going to happen. Shipments are really weird. And already freight's up 12%. Surcharges are smack dab diddly do hard. 
right into every service that everyone uses to ship. And folks are like, that fish was $19.99. I'm not paying $12 for shipping. You are out of your mind, Mr. Fish Guy or Fish Woman. <laughs> now what? Because they had to buy the fish potentially if they didn't raise them. Well, they should be breeding their own fish. Well, then you should breed your own fish so you can have your own fish. So we lose touch with that. And I'm trying to give you scenarios of how I feel. Um, and if you feel the same way, then, then I, you know, then this is it. This is what we were supposed to be talking about. Uh, it's inflation. Unfortunately, it's the truth. It's not inflation. It has zero to do with inflation right now. Okay. The price of goods will always get more as time goes on, but it is zero about inflation. Inflation to me is the term that we use as a natural ascent of the cost of something. Well, I remember when I could buy Snickers and an ice cold Coke for a nickel. I got it. More people, more production, more things, lots of all these extra things and all the extra ingredients and, and, and dispersing. I got it. So we get to inflation. This is a different time, far different than what we ever could have imagined. When you have airlines prior to COVID going, uh, uh, thank you, but, uh, we're, uh, we're no longer going to be shipping live animals. Thank you. And then they back out. So now you're restricting the amount, the variety, the options of kaplunk places to ship live animals. So now we're depending on, on bringing large amounts into, excuse me, specific locations. To be specific, there are places in Canada that can only bring in certain um, items from certain airlines and airports from outside of Canada. In the United States, there were people not transipping or touching anything because they weren't sure what was happening. And they couldn't get specific flights because everything was backed up from other supply goods because all these other flights are no longer taking live animals. This is pre-COVID. So now you smack on something nobody was ready for, right? It was like being the new kid at school and they're like, hey, we're going to play, we're going to play dodgeball. You want to play? Heck yeah, I want to play. Boom, step out onto the dodgeball floor and you had no idea that they got some house rules for dodgeball. That's what COVID did. COVID was like, hold my beer. Boom. We've got house rules on how things are going to ship, how things are going to move, how things are going to be made. Factories were shutting down all over the world. Factories. Distribution facilities were shutting down all over the world. So now you have manufacturing, distribution, and now distribution's running out of stuff. And the fish stores are like, hey, um, we need a what? You, um, you're not, you can't get that? Uh, why not? Uh, well, COVID. Oh, COVID? Okay. Sorry, you can't buy that. COVID. So everything became COVID, but there was no explanation, no explanation, no explanation of what COVID in essence strategy was being implemented. There was zero by a lot of manufacturers. And I'm talking aquarium industry, but this also relates to pretty much every other industry, right? So remember the, the, tragedy of toilet paper. Folks were just buying toilet paper. We have enough. Distribution facilities couldn't get it out fast enough and they weren't adding extra routes at the time. So people were like, oh my goodness, don't worry about food. We going to need some TP. So everybody rushes out and what happens? I'm going to tell Barbara, Sarah, Judy, Peter, John, Jacob, Jingle, and Schmidt. Toilet paper. Bang, right? It's the same thing, except now you had manufacturers stopping, stopping. And some folks know this firsthand because they were working for a company, unfortunately, that was like, well, we're not, we can't do anything. This is like this, right? It starts choking. It has nothing 
it has nothing to do with inflation. It has everything to do with mismanagement and not having an operational plan in the event of an unprecedented circumstance or time. Same way you would plan, we're going to Disney. Well, what if Disneyland closed? What if Disney World closed on your way there? Did you have a contingency plan? Businesses that had a contingency plan knew exactly what to do and when to do it. And those were the folks that had zero issues getting product to their final destination. CJ, I got to hand it to him. However, now, now we're going to insert. So, right, we have all of this, we have all of this going on, right? You and me, you and me, we we got our tanks. We're like, I'm going to order me some prime on Amazon. I'm going to order me some fish food from northfinusa.com. I'm going to give me some fish. No, Amazon wasn't ready either. Amazon wasn't ready. You ordered Prime. Like, this is perfect. I'm going to get this on Amazon. Says it'll be here tomorrow. Tuesday comes. Wednesday comes. Thursday comes an email. Dear buyer, sorry, we're experiencing delays. Right. No one, no one was ready. Amazon's not even that much cheaper after you factor in Prime, the taxes you're going to pay, the whole nine yards. Uh, sometimes Prime was, was, was reaching 12 days. So now, hear me out, hear me out. Shipping cost, we're already going up. Amazon was rising prices because of the surcharge. Folks that were selling stuff online had to figure it out. Now you have COVID. Now you have restriction of goods. Sean Sequil said, I'm in New York City. Never missed one order from those dudes. That's because you have like 3 million square feet of warehouse in Amazon. (laughs) It's like right around New York City. I think there's New Jersey and right outside NYC. It's ridiculous. So you have all these things playing a role and you have little Jimmy Fish seller that's like, how am I supposed to ship this? How? How how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to ship this so that my customer buys it doesn't complain. And then I don't lose out. And me doing this makes it worth it, right? Because we have to value our time. This is with anything we do with business, with, with selling goods, with, you know, I love when you're, you're on Facebook marketplace and they're like, I'm selling this pen for $1, uh, porch pickup. (laughs) It took you longer to post that. And then you, you get people, is this still for sale? wasted time. Is this still for sale? Is a dollar, <laughs> right? Because we are trying to value the time as a business, whether you're, you're selling, you're buying, the consumer's valuing their time. You have all these things transpiring in an already increasing market of shipping. Then you restrict the amount of goods that are coming in to include aquariums because face it, there's a glass shortage. And it doesn't mean that Oh my goodness, we can't make glass. It means that little Betty Sue, little Jimmy Johnson, uh, Tommy Thompson, was it Tim McGraw song? (laughs) All decided that they wanted an aquarium. So here comes somebody that said a lot more folks are in the aquarium hobby. That's true. They're buying up all the little ditties, right? I want a beta. I want some nano fish. I want some shrimp. I saw that guy doing chicklids. I want some chicklids, right? So now you got all of these folks that were never in the industry, hobby, fun, on top of folks that now are home because they're working from home, 
right? Which was funny because you could shift everybody to work from home, but every time you called a call center, which is the perfect place to work from home, they're like, due to COVID, we have restricted hours. It just became crazy. So now everybody wanted a desktop aquarium. Everybody was like, whew, I'm home. Freaking rewind to September 11th when outdoor patios, fireplaces, the dot-com boom prior to that, everybody was in a panic and then was at home for a while. So things became more expensive because it was harder to produce fast enough and people could pay a premium because they were home. They were going to enjoy it. They weren't going on vacation. They weren't taking 42,000 golf trips this year and going to the water parks and taking their family on the RV around the world type thing. Like all that money was now shifted in a sense. A lot of them went to aquariums. There are some aquarium shops that are up in terms of, now I'm not saying how much money they're making. I'm talking in terms of the amount of customers and sales. Some of them are up 300% which is good when you don't have this looming cloud of COVID causing other disruptions on an already rising cost industry, right? Is everybody following me? I joined for the title, but I stayed for Jay's impressions. <laughs> so exactly, they hurt small business market, which is why now I'll drive to Jersey to buy from small business instead of big box retailers. That's good. Honestly, when it comes down to it, support your local fish store first, right? If if you're if you can, um, and then there, find if your local fish store or a fish store that you know maybe has an online business before you jump to go further. Which Amazon is not just Amazon; it is also small businesses working that avenue. So now we're we're in a fury, and I'm going to give you a real example. I have it. I have I have it written down because I was, I knew that there was a problem, but I didn't know how crazy it could be. Uh, so I've noticed twice some folks talked about my good friend, Rich at Fish Hut in New Jersey. They said, dude's been packed since all this began and never raised prices. Well, I can tell you he's no longer in terms of, he has more sales. But what I can tell you is Rich is a very smart fish person. He has a backup plan. He has strategy. But what really hurt uh, industries like Rich's, which made it very difficult and super busy, some of y'all are going to hate me for this. All of it's happening, right? We're going to get to this arc. We're going, we're like, oh man, buy, 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 buy fish. Ooh, beta shrimp. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, nice. Northfin USA. This is great. Ooh, I'm going to the fish crew. Oh, I need a new coral lens. This is great. Let's do it. New lights, new fish, rocks. Buy, buy, buy. You're going to your local fish store. You're buying it all. You're doing this thing. And now countries are like, we have to help. There's a lot of people without jobs, right? So now you're, you're arcing. So we're going to do some extra bennies. We're going to give you some benefits, right? So you got, hello, I'm Uncle Sam. This is not how Uncle Sam sounds, but this is the way he sounds here. Hello, I'm Uncle Sam, and you're going to get some, we're going to give you some extra tallywhackers and some diddly do has, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you some money in your pocket. Uh, but you have to have reduced hours or not have a job. <laughs> Smithers. Nah, I'm just not going to work. Hi, Jay. Yeah, this is Nelson. I'm no longer going to work. Y yeah, no, it's not you. No, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to stay home. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Th thank you so much. 
So now business goes, we're down employees. We can't compete. And this is not everybody. I'm just, this is a broad statement, right? Because I know there are folks that didn't do this. I know there are folks that did do this. So now businesses, owners are forced to hand. Do I hire extra people really quick or do I do the work? You're the business owner, you make the decision. So now the business owner is taxed, stressed, They're trying to make sure that their profits are good because there's a ton of people coming in. But, ooh, now we're going to restrict the time you can come into the shop. Hello, everyone. Uncle Sam here again. Uh, Restrict your business hours. And, uh, yeah, you're going to do that. And um, you're going to have to pay some things, okay? But we'll help you out with a little PPP, which is Payroll Protection Plan. But you got to fill out this little diddly do, and uh, yeah, everything's going to be good. So there's a lot of information. Everything's happening. Uh, some companies are, you know, is that one like, man, works. Ooh, bye, 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 bye. Oh, got some little money. Boom, stimulus happens. Now everything's ramping up. But what we're not paying attention to is the shipping costs are now going up. Oh, turns out shipping containers are now apparently at a scarcity because we're loading up to make sure we have enough stuff coming into not just the United States, which has 300 and who knows what the census is going to show, 360 million people for the sake of argument, getting stuff, 40 million in Canada. You've got Australia, which I think Australia, what do they they have like New Zealand, I think has like 5 million people. Uh, China's getting stuff to other folks. They're pushing stuff out. You've Think about all the countries in the world, right? Shipping containers, just doodly, doodly, doodly. you ever play a game where you had to set up like shipping lanes? Think about it. So now shipping containers are down. We got to manufacture shipping containers. So now the cost of things start going up. But on a good note, right at this time, pay attention, fuel prices are down. So now they don't have an excuse of fuel. What their excuse is, is legitimate. There's a lot of stuff now being produced way faster. Now, if distribution and manufacturing had plans in place, maybe they offset shifts. But now we're struggling. We can't get aquariums. Fish are flying out the door. So now you have, does anybody have a guess at how many? Just take a guess. How many aquarium stores, physical, non-big box retailers, there are in the United States. Anybody, just take a guess. I mean, I don't know, but I know what I have in a system that I look at. So I know the number far exceeds that. And now let me read some uh, questions real quick. Uh, Fish Hut's been packed. I won't name the store. Local store was trying to charge a friend of mine 80 bucks for a juvenile blue dolphin taking advantage of of new fish keepers. Uh, It could be. Uh, Could be them trying to offset the cost. Maybe they have 40 employees. I don't know. Um, My local fish store is selling a blue dolphin for $75. So, okay. They're probably buying from the same place. Think about it. Australia only has 30 million people. There you go. I think Texas has 40 million people. Uh, Somebody said 20,000 fish stores. I'm in the jib business. Half of my staff wanted to not come back when we reopen. Half stayed at home on unemployment, make the same money. Cue them finally stopping that after $600 a week. That. So that's the same thing that was happening to a lot of businesses. Billy Parker's comment doesn't play a role here. Only for the sheer fact that that hasn't happened yet. Um, and it, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't, per, honestly, it doesn't pertain to this because it, it doesn't. In scenario, in the fine details, we can go deeper into a lot of other stuff like um, what type of toilet paper they have in their public restroom. Do they offer coffee or snacks? You know, all these things play a role. Does a store upkeep? Do they have, there's so many different things that play a role. But I get it. But we're going to hold on that. And I don't know why Uncle Sam was British. I said, I don't know why. So now we have it all peaking, right? But what we don't realize is there are some places that cannot ship still. 
places where we get fish, places that are amazing at collecting. They're impacted by all this. They're, they're shifted work elsewhere. Now there are more people going after the same places, which is now causing a lot of folks to go, first come, first serve. We're, we're now, we're just offsetting the shipping costs. You're paying for it. And you know what? DOA, dead on arrival for collection to either transshipper or direct, no longer being covered because we can't figure this stuff out right now. We're not even in winter yet. So now the rising cost is happening. This is freshwater. This is saltwater. Somebody said there are 20,000 fish stores. I would say that there's probably that many, if not more. So now you have to have all of them going after all of the similar stuff that we want because Jay in California, Jay in Texas, Jay in Ottawa, Jay in Miami, Jay in Maine, Jay in New York. We all want the good stuff. We all want what we want. So all of these places have to figure out how to get it for Jay to come into the store still because we're about to open for a couple hours. Now at this time, there are a lot of stores that just weren't savvy enough and, and I feel bad, but businesses were shutting down. But the aquarium industry was thriving. So everybody immediately said, that's why prices went up. It's because the aquarium industry is thriving. But that's not really the case. The demand, of course, went up. Folks were at home. What do we want to do, right? Look at the video game industry. I'm sure the video game industry, handheld portable games, uh, game systems, I bet you that went up. I don't even know those numbers. But that's not the point. Things were going up because we were stuck here. Because we didn't need to use the funds to go there for holidays. But with all of the different logistical nightmares, the biggest piece that was driving the cost of the aquarium industry was shipping. We start now, now this, I, I, I really need you to pay attention to this because most never, ever in a million years, thought that that this was like if anybody knows horse racing for a for a horse to win the triple crown it's like <gasps> this was the triple crown for shipping now i'm not saying that there wasn't price gouging somewhere i'm not saying that because i know it's very hard to get aquariums in certain locations certain types of aquariums other manufacturers said you know what we're done we're not making aquariums over a certain size forget this mess Dollar per gallon sales were still happening. There were people getting nano aquariums, but they couldn't get six foot aquariums, but they can get four foot aquariums. But there were still companies that were jamming to pump out big, large aquariums and nobody, no one could keep them in stock. No one. And then aside from shipping, whenever unable to run the storefront business, imagine trying to run either delivery service, this is a good point by Billy, or even curbside. What did you want? Uh, oh, uh, Neon Tetris? Okay, good. And what did, okay, they go, oh, crap. Did they want, uh, like there's this whole thing. Like we, we don't think of this. We're just like, skirt, pull up. Hey, where's my stuff? What do you mean it ain't ready? I called you like 30 minutes ago. Yeah. I know you did, but I still got to bag the fish. I still got to do all of the same things on top of answering the phone, taking orders and maintaining diplomacy out in the parking lot. And then I have to have the employees, my team know exactly what's happening. So we're like, skr, 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 skr. I mean, it's, it's getting insane at this point. Now we're starting to climb into the trifecta. 
election year, Christmas, COVID. It's not political. It's the truth. Election, Christmas, COVID. We were already on a decline of delivery times on top of an increase, and now you're going to slide it back for normal Christmas? And now you have to slide it back even more because of COVID? And now you have to slide it back even more because COVID election holiday. Shipping is getting out of hand. And it's all because of all of the other hoops. Now, I'm not putting the blame on them for the rise in costs because I know things cost more over time. That's the inflation part. But we have become this society. As Sean said, I clicked check out five and a half minutes ago. Where is my product? Really? You serious? The same person that's complaining that their product is not here is the same person that pays three times more for a 20 ounce soft drink than they would for a two liter because of convenience. So you have all of these issues stemming and now locations are shutting down. Saltwater, Hawaii, shut down. They put a ban on it. It was in fluctuation before. And here's my example. Straight up, here's my example. And I want you to tell me how you would fix this as a store. Every day I talk to stores. It's actually not my favorite thing to do because sitting on the phone, I would rather be in the store. So I pick up the phone and I'm talking to a store. I'm getting an order from them. I'm asking them how they're doing, how they're transitioning. My job is not only to sell them product. It's my job. But, but not only do I take it a step further, the company I work for, in a sense, like it's a cultural demand. We go further. If we can help you in any way, shape, or form, we want to do it. We want to be able to help you. And so we take that extra time. And I'm on the phone and I'm chatting with them. And I said, is this a good time to talk? You sound busy. And what transpired after that blew my mind. Because I didn't know it was that bad. I knew it was bad. I knew the cost of shipping was very high. And, and it, there's a lot of different things that we don't see that happen. But this is just the shipping part. We get in this, in this brain of ours that it's a fish. My fish spit out babies. Why does it cost so much to get that fish? Well, it takes time. It takes resources. It takes maybe that business has a ton of different benefits. It takes, there are so much that goes into a coral store, a local fish store. I mean, you do water changes on maybe one to 10 aquariums. Look at what they're doing water changes on. What about their water bill? You have a house. They have a house and a store. We just think that because they're a business owner, they're a billionaire. That's not always the case. It's just a passion that they went after. Maybe, it, it, maybe they are millionaires from it. That's awesome. But our, this is myself included. We're short-sighted on the whole part. We just go in and like, wow, fish, tanks, filters, plants, all of the things. 
But that person had to buy them first. We just think they magically showed up. And once they make money, they can pay off the person behind them. That's not how any of that works. They have all of the same things that we go through, plus the managing of their business, which has folks like us working for them that have their own problems. Like we miss all of this. And somebody said, don't get twisted off your drink. I'm not. I'm very passionate about this because I feel like there's this this proverbial wall between us, the consumer, the hobbyist, and to the store owner and the manufacturer. Like we hear one bad story of a manufacturer and that's it. It's, it's crazy. Mike said it all boils down to people need to breed more fish and sell to local shops at a reasonable price. How? That person, Mike, has to go out and spend their own money before they know that there's a demand at their local shop. Now they have to raise that fish to a specific size, one to make it costly for themselves in terms of affordability and caring for this animal, then to be able to sell it in bulk to a fish store that's going to want to buy it. They're not going to buy five. And then that store has to turn a profit to pay for all of its bills. Like we forget that. So yeah, that, that is a, a piece that can, that can help. It truly, it truly can, but that person has to be well suited to be able to distribute and breed for the, the profitability you're doing a business you break even in that's a hobby. (laughs) That's a hobby. So I'm talking to this fish store owner. And he says, yeah, I'm I'm busy, but my mind's more occupied. I can't believe the shipment that I brought in. Now, this is just one person. And I know that it happens case by case. And and certain folks have better shipping lanes. They have uh, companies that they can partner with to bring in fish or coral or whatever the case is, right? Uh, but this is one perspective and it blew my mind. Craigers fish said, just go look at what Trevor O'Shea just went through on an import. Exactly. I'm going to use Trevor O'Shea. Didn't ask him. I apologize if he gets upset. Dude forks over his money. Now, I don't know if he did a pre-order or not, but for the sake of argument, let's say he didn't do a pre-order from his, his consumers. He fires some off money. Thousands of dollars. I think it, Craigers, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like seven grand. Who's got seven grand? I need, I need money for a down payment of a house I have, let alone put $7,000 down for fish that aren't guaranteed to show up alive. And I'm risking my money because I really don't know that person. I'm not saying you, you should trust everyone or don't trust everyone. What I'm saying is, this is real life. You cannot be naive enough to think 100% of the people are 100% trustworthy. We would, we would love it to be that way, but it's not. This is reality. Dude forks over something like seven grand. I don't even think all of it came. I think it took forever. It was like he did it in September and it was now, what's, what's this, January 20? I think he posted it on the 24th. And most of them were dead. So not only did he pay the 7,000, but now he has to figure out how do I get the recoupment of that money? Imagine if he took pre-orders because now he's got customers like, where's my fish? And he has to deal with an exporter. You see? What is he supposed to do? What is the consumer? The consumer's got to get their money back, right? What is he supposed to do? Just eat $7,000 and not feed his family?
we have this perception because there's an Amazon or PetSmart or Petco, or, you know, I'll even, I'll even use Corey. There's a co-op. He's successful. Why can't everybody else be successful? That's true. But there's also a ton of other variables, ton of other variables, but we don't see that. We only look here and then we go, nah, they shouldn't have, they, why are they raising? Why, why are they doing that? Jerks. That's what we do. We do it all the time. I've done it when buying sneakers. I was a closet sneakerhead buying sneakers. I do it buying Ninja Turtle collectibles. I'm like, that thing was three bucks in 1988. Why do they want $700? That's not inflation. That's, well, if somebody's going to pay for it, why am I going to hate on them? But we're causing more issues with all of this stuff because now we're like, hey, for just 17 easy payments, we're not even going to run your credit until you default. And you could buy this uh, $6 bag of food from PayPal here. Like we're giving people access to buy this stuff. We, we just, we're, we think we're smarter as consumers, but we're not. We're, we're not. We're spending money we don't have. And we're not thinking about, we, we're very selfish. Let's put it that way. We're selfish consumers. Every consumer. I don't want to hear anybody go, that's not the way I think. You, we all have done it. Where's candy when you need her? I don't know. I don't know where anybody is when you need them. Candy is busy. She doesn't get paid for this. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and remove that. Bang, got him. You want some of this? <laughs> so the reality of life is everything about it is a disconnect between the consumer, wholesale, and manufacturers. Um, the risk of getting fish delivered is that nothing is guaranteed. Well, but as a consumer, we want it to be guaranteed. Right. And then we have it in our aquarium for two weeks and it dies. And it's the, it's the person that sold it to us. Fault. So there are a lot of different things that play the role. So I asked this specific store, I asked them if I can use their name and they said, yeah, but I'm not going to. They brought in 15 boxes of fish and coral. 15 boxes. Lumpy dog. This isn't even a rant. This is the actual video. I got eight minutes to wrap this sucker up. They brought in 15 boxes. They spent on 15 boxes $12,000. Okay. Can anybody guess what the shipping cost was? And while we're guessing, because I want some serious guesses, what was the shipping cost for this store to bring in 15 boxes of live coral and live fish? And then I'm going to, while we're guessing, I want to talk about when I worked at Universal Rocks, we would put bricks, real rocks, weighted items onto a pallet to get it to the next class so that it would be cheaper for the customer. Heavier. We would make it heavier. This is insane. It was insane. So I'm getting answers. I've got Billy Parker, five grand. Fish Tank Barn, 6,000. Cunningham said 500. Cunningham Cichlids, I don't know who's shipping your fish and stuff, but I would stick to them because $500 would have been easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Craigers Fish said seven. Lumpy said 2,400. T-Bones Fish said 20,000. That's, that's more than the whole bill. <laughs> Uh, seven grand, two to 5,000 easy. I'd say about 300 per box. It's live at the minimum, 8,000, 3,000. Well, you didn't say where. Ah, I just, I just want guesses. 6,300 dollars. 
more than half of the cost of those live items was shipping. So here's my question. Here's my question. They're coming straight from Indo. It was salt water. I just, and, and this, this is what I'm talking about. Because we look at it as, where was it coming from? Is it ground? Is it air? Is it FedEx? Is it UPS? Is it USPS? Is it Johnny Joe Schmo's cargo shipment? Is it a private shipper? At the end of the day, the business has to take all of these variables into effect and displace, displace that throughout their products, right? So it doesn't matter where it's coming from. If this business is selling that style of item, they have to understand, well, if this is going to cost this much, I'm going to have to offset it by adding a little bit to this because I can't make this that much money. So what does the business do? What does the business do? More than half the cost of what they paid to bring in these items. These are not pre-order items. These are items that we go, hmm, I've seen better. And we move on. Or we're like, holy grail, I need this fish. I need this coral. I need that shrimp. What do we do? Do we swallow it? Does the business go, nah, I'm feeling generous. I'm just going to eat the $6,300 in shipping. Or do they have to pass it on somehow? In order for their business to be successful and for us to still have stuff to buy from them, they have to figure it out. And we have to be what? Okay with it? And if the costs weren't that much because of all the different things that had to be implemented, then do we ever get that item again? Can it be done cheaper? The answer is probably, yeah, it could probably be done cheaper. This is without insurance. This is without a guarantee for the store. And then the store is supposed to say, mm, gee, golly, Willikers, we'll guarantee you for 72 hours or something. Like, what do they do? Like, these are all questions we don't ever ask. We don't ever think about. We just click buy now. And if we don't get what we expected, we're like, send it back. Give me my money back. Well, what happens? All of these things play a huge role into why things cost so much money in the aquarium industry. But everybody, every business is supposed to be innovative. Every business is supposed to figure out a way to lower their prices and to sell better, market better. But in reality, are they? Typically, if it's a premium item, it is going to cost more. So when you get premium goods for a cheaper price than other premium goods, what steps did that premium goods place not take or cut out that still made them premium? Was it what was sold to them was premium? We don't know. We don't. If I owned a fish store and saw them prices, that's it. I'm moving to goldfish crackers and Swedish fish snacks. <laughs> the consumer would have to pay the price is the answer. Michael Leonard, what are you smoking? Shipping is free on Amazon. My friend, shipping is not free on Amazon. That is the nearsighted thought of the average consumer, my friend. It's the same thing we all think. Shipping's free on Amazon. First of all, can you buy fish on Amazon? No, not yet. And two, it's not free because you either paid, hear me out, you paid a Prime membership. Well, you got Amazon Prime TV and some free music. That's nice. 
You even got yourself a couple little extra ditties. I'll help you out for that money a year. I think that went up too. Oh, and if you actually priced it out, you're not saving that much money because Amazon is also taking a cut from that person selling that item on Amazon to offset the cost. And then they figured out, well, we're going to do our own shipment and cut out everyone else. They can. So if a local fish store could do all that, yeah, their prices wouldn't be so high. They do memberships. But the idea is Amazon, trillion dollars, local fish store. Let's say some great ones, million dollars a year. That's not what they make. It's eight o'clock. It's just, that's it. A million dollars. Whew, that got bright. Now I'm being interrogated. So at the end of the day, the consumer... That's it. They're not. They're not the only ones taking the hit. Small businesses, businesses in general. I'm not hating on any big business. I'm in favor of it. They provide jobs. I don't care how you feel they are. They're, they're mean. I, look, I get it. There's different ways businesses handle things and you, you can choose who you shop with. But at the end of the day, it affects everyone. And there's no one specific thing that caused it. But here we have the super chaotic, ultra infused issue in our industry of a boom, of a, I don't even know what you want to call it, a virus. I don't know what we're calling it. An, an, uh, <laughs> a non-predicted massive event, election year, people at home, extra money people should be saving, but the idea is to spend it, of course, to infuse the economy, but then benefits to pull people from businesses. Now businesses don't have enough. Folks, this is a big thing. And we only ever see one part. it. It's crazy. It's real. And this is why things cost so much money. I know a lot of folks were taught prime is $99 a year. It is not $99 a year. Um, at the end of the day, see that's somebody saying it's $99 a year is somebody that hasn't looked at the prime prices. I think it's like $140 a year. Let's look. Amazon Prime, it is $119 for an annual membership. There are specials if you're Medicaid, EBT, <laughs> or a student, um, and or you could pay $12.99 a month. See, 120, 139. It's it's all over the place. It's whatever. Either way, it's not it's not 99 bucks. It never it was maybe 99 bucks a few years ago. So HEPA Aquatics, thank you so much for being a member. I appreciate it. I've been paying $99 for a few years now. You should check, my friend, unless you have some sort of like small business type thing. I don't know. But we got to be better. There's a lot of stuff that's happening, but what I was saying is I didn't talk about the yellow tank because there's a ban. That's a weird one-off situation. You can get a yellow tank from someplace else other than Hawaii. And there's just a lot of uh, politics that are centered around it. And it's shut down, which is okay. T-Bone Fishes, thank you very much for the super chat. I, I truly, truly appreciated it. But at the end of the day, that's it's different. Because you don't have to spend extra money to buy that fish. But there are people that will. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's the, that's the other argument. And that could be another 30 minutes where it's like, that fish is not worth that money to you, to you. But to somebody else, that fish is worth it. And I'll, and I'll leave you with this. That yellow tang, I think in some places it's $500. At one point you can buy it for like $6, $16. Yes, they are breeding them. Yes, they were collected in the wild, but the wild prices were cheaper because it was cheaper to get them to you. Now you can't get them, so you have to wait till they're a certain size. Now you're going to get them this big. They're see-through. They're not even yellow. I don't know. But there was a fish, and I encourage you to look this up, and then I'm going to leave you with something. There's a gem tang. I have some Ninja Turtles. I'll trade you for some fish food. Michael Leonard, I'm open and available, my brother. PM me, DM me, tree me, SMS me, whatever. Uh, I'm on Instagram, jwill07. Uh, or you can email me at askawaywithj, J-A-Y at gmail.com. I'll be glad to trade you. Um, the gem tang, I physically saw these prices, was being sold for fourteen dollars to $1,800, upwards of $2,200 for a singular fish. They now have substantially come down in price, but people were buying them. But I'm going to leave you with this. I don't care what's happening in the world. It doesn't mean that you or me could be a turd, could act like a turd, could be mean, be short-tempered, to be frustrated or more stressed than we should be. We're going to blame it on, on other things. You're responsible for how you act. No one else. No feed. No update. No tweet. No TikTok, a Snapchatty, grandma reel, resharing, love tapping, thumbs up, thumbs down. Makes you do or feel any way. It's you. It's true. So whether you want to feel like crap every day, and I'm not going to lie, the last few days, I have. I can blame it on a million things. Matter of fact, I think that's what I said. I can blame this on so many different things, but I'm not going to. This was the message I sent to somebody. I'm taking ownership for how I have been feeling and how I have been around others. Now, I'm not, you know, yelling or screaming or DDT in anybody. But I'm taking ownership of me. Stop blaming everyone else for your shortcomings, for you not succeeding in your life or achieving your goals. There's no one really stopping you. They are just a roadblock. And so if you were driving and you came to a roadblock, what would you do? Just get out of your car and leave it? No. Your car in this scenario is your life. Do you just leave it? I think not. I think you back up and then you go left or right or you turn around as much as you don't want to and you go back as far as you need to go till you can figure out how to get around that roadblock. Stop wasting time. Stop complaining. Stop saying I can't. It's impossible. People like me aren't able to do those things. I'm tired of all that. You should be tired of all that. You have the capability. You have the intelligence. You have the resources. 
you just may not use them properly and you have the energy, you just have to find it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you understand a lot of this. I hope that this brought some things in perspective and ultimately I hope this makes us just a little bit better as consumers, at least in the aquarium industry. Give a little break to your local fish store. Tell them you appreciate them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. If you're a member, that live starts now. Holla!